Hi, everybody. This morning, Ribby snuggled up to me and he said, Mommy, can you make me some Ribby snacks and tell me the story of plate tectonics again? And I said, you know what, Ribs? That's a good idea, but I got a better one. How about we tell all my students the story of plate tectonics? That way they can do better on the test. And he thought that sounded okay. He seems to really like you guys. So here it goes. The story of plate tectonics. So let's start, Ribby. Once upon a long, long time ago, well, it actually really wasn't all that long ago. It was only like a little over a hundred years and time's pretty relative and compared to how long the earth's been here and how long the universe has been around, a hundred years isn't really all that long. But in anyway, a long, long time ago in a land far, far away, Actually, it wasn't all that far away. It was Germany, which is just kind of, you know, across the Atlantic Ocean. And, I mean, compared to how far away Proxima Centauri, which is the closest star to us, is Germany's just a hot, hop, skip, and a jump away. But it, anyway, a long time, well, I don't know, like a little over 100 years in Germany, there was a man named Alfred Wagner. And he was a scientist, but he wasn't a chemist or just a physicist or a biologist. He was an earth and space scientist. He studied astronomy and geology and meteorology. And he came up with a hypothesis. In his studies, he realized it looked like the continents of North and South America would fit into the continents of Africa and parts of Europe. And he came up with the idea that once upon a time, all the continents were joined together in a giant landmass called Pangaea, and over time they had slowly drifted apart. And he called his hypothesis continental drift. Now, Normally, when a scientist has a hypothesis, he has to test it out in the lab. But when you're an Earth scientist, the entire planet is your lab, so it's not as easy as if you're a chemist or a biologist. So what he had to do was set out and gather evidence. Okay. So he traveled around to different continents and he found fossils on these continents and he matched them up and he correlated them. And even though they were really far apart, he found similar fossils from similar times. Now, why would that happen? Because now all the animals are on, on all the continents are very, very different from each other. But he was able to match them up. So that just provided evidence that perhaps maybe the continents were once joined at that time. He also had rock evidence and plant fossils and things like that, and he gathered a whole wealth of evidence and put them into a paper. But, alas, nobody believed him at the time, mostly because he couldn't explain how the continents moved. They said, you know, Al, you have some good ideas there, and you've gathered a lot of evidence, but you just don't have any credible proof for what moves the continent. And he really didn't have an answer at that time. He just suggested that perhaps they trudge through the ocean floor. Anyway, five decades and two World War later, World War later, um, a man named Harry Hess was out mapping the ocean floor. Now, during World War II, we got some really good technology called sonar. We use that for our submarines. Sonar stands for sound, navigation, and ranging. It lets us send out sound waves, and then the waves bounce off, and we're able to locate objects, you know, kind of like bats and dolphins do. Well, Harry Hess used that technology to start mapping and studying the ocean floor. And what he realized is underneath all that water, 
There was mountains and valleys, and it was a lot like the land above the water. It was just hidden by the water. And what he found in the center of the Atlantic Ocean was a giant crack where magma was seeping up and the plates were being pushed apart. Now, we needed more information on this, so they started dating the rocks on each side of the crack, and they realized that they got progressively older the further away from the center of the crack. And on each side of the crack, they matched up in age, okay? So a rock ridge that was, say, a hundred miles west of the crack was roughly the same age as a rock ridge that was a hundred miles east of the crack. And that provided the evidence and for a force that moved the plates. Because as we know, Ribby, nothing moves unless a force is applied. Now, Harry Hess called this the theory of seafloor spreading, but we started going back and looking at earthquake data and volcano data and Wagner's continental drift. And what we realized was that these things are all related and the theory of plate tectonics was born. Now, what most people think when they think of theory is they think it's just somebody's idea or belief, but that is simply not true. Theories are actually very much rooted in scientific fact and evidence. For instance, the theory of plate tectonics focuses on three areas. First, it says that the Earth's crust is broken up into sections called plates. Now, that's not a theory. That's not just somebody's idea. That is a fact. We can see where these plate boundaries are today. The second part of the theory is that these plates move. Some of them slide past. Some of them move away from each other. Some of them collide with each other. That's also not a theory. Thanks to GPS satellites, we know that that's true, too. We're able to set up sensors on each side of the plate boundaries, and not only do we know they're moving, we know how fast they're moving. Now, these plates don't move very fast, maybe a couple centimeters a year, which is about the rate your fingernails grow, but they still move. And they give us all of our beautiful landforms, our mountains and our volcanic island arcs and our rift valleys. Now here's the theory part. The theory part is the why they move. What is the driving force? Well, scientists believe that it, it is what's called convection currents in the mantle. See, the Earth's core is very hot, and there's a lot of radioactive decay which releases heat, and heat is a form of energy, and energy can make things move. And as the mantle heats up, there is a rising, cooling, sinking, heating, rising, cooling, sinking, circular motion going on in the mantle. Okay? This, we think, is the driving force of the plate tectonics. Now, we're not 100% certain this is how it works. I mean, after all, there could be some little guy in the center of the earth pedaling his bicycle really, really fast, moving the plate. But there's a lot of credible evidence for the fact that it could be convection currents in the mantle. Oh. What's that, Ribby? Oh, you want to hear the story about how the dinosaurs died out? Well, maybe we'll do that one a little later. All right, guys. I hope everybody's staying safe. We'll see you next time.